All right, guys, getting straight into my top 10 fragrances that I am looking forward to for fall. I will say this first, though. It is about 90 degrees here, 90 degrees Fahrenheit here in the Deep South. It is humid. It is hot. So it is very, very difficult for me to put away my summer fragrances that I have been loving so much, my salty fragrances, and having to transition. So, but I'm going to do that. Um, I know that fall will be here before we know it. So anyway, the first one that I wanted to um, introduce to you guys, because I haven't seen anyone talk about this fragrance. I did a hashtag search on YouTube. I see no reviews about it. I don't know. Maybe it's because it is so new. Anyway, this is Rebecca Minkoff. And even though this is a new fragrance, this is not a new name. Rebecca Minkoff, if you don't know, is a clothing designer and she is out of Brooklyn, New York. I have a couple of her items. She has accessories as well. So, but this is her new and only, one and only fragrance. And this just came out. Um, it is just simply called Rebecca Minkoff. It is an EDP. This one, let me tell you what the notes are on this one real quick. So she's got on the top notes, cardamom essence coriander seeds essence and bergamot and then heart notes of tobacco accord jasmine absolute and karma floor and base notes of tonka labdomen resin and patchouli essence so i had to look up what karma floor was because i figured it was some kind of aroma chemical turns out karma floor is a salicylate so it is a chemical the creator of this aroma chemical basically says that the material basically just smells like tropical flowers and i say all that to say this so the notes in here are basically essences so nothing too strong nothing too over the top the tobacco is not overly uh, wet. It's like a dry tobacco if it's even detectable at all. The pros on this one is that the cardamom and the coriander seeds, all none of this comes off like herbaceous or spicy. And also the patchouli is dialed way back in this. The only problem I have with this one is that it is not very strong. It is more or less a I call it a cozy scent. It's only going to be detectable if you are in close proximity of someone that has this on. And, but I will say I don't have anything in my collection quite like this. I actually have it on today. I sprayed it a little earlier and I'm going to respray it again. It basically, it basically is just a lightly spicy, definitely unisex fragrance, but to me, it doesn't lean so unisex that it's going to be a turnoff for those who do not like the borderline fragrances. I do get a little bit of tobacco, like I said, I, a little bit. It's, it's a little bit there, but it's not very strong. Patchouli's dialed way back, so don't be afraid of that at all. Uh, there is some Tonka in here that's making this slightly sweet, but if I had to classify this, I would just say that it is a very easy to wear fall slightly spicy type of scent i plan on doing a full review on this one probably my next video will be a full review on this one and rebecca minkoff as a house like i said the only thing about this is that it just it's just not very strong it's not going to project like a beast it's nothing like that but I did want to include it in my fall roundup because, especially my transitions, because it borderlines something that you could wear on a coolish summer night, but definitely can go into fall. So again, Rebecca Minkoff, I love this one. So the next one I have, I have a travel spray of this because um, I'm always a little cautious with the... Um, Maison Margiela, the replica fragrances, because some of these do not last. Like, and I'm not super picky about a fragrance not lasting because if you know me, if you watch my channel, you know I'm not a big fan of fragrances that hang around for 10 plus hours because I get tired of it. This one, this one has decent longevity. 
but I do have the travel size in it because I was unsure if I was going to like it. And, you know, and let's just face it, these are expensive. These full bottles are super expensive. So whenever I can grab a travel size, I love to do that. It's a great way to blind buy without going way, way in debt to a perfume that you don't even know if you're going to like. Uh, according to the website, Whispers in the Library is inspired by the scent of waxed wood and paper. So the combination of the pepper notes with woody and warm notes of cedar and vanilla recreate an atmosphere of an ancestral library. So there, just quickly with the notes here, there's um, pepper up top, there's some orange flower petals, there's some patchouli, mid notes, tonka bean, there's some benzoins going on, some resinous notes, and then the base is vanilla and vetiver and some cedar wood. So that basically is what I get with this. I def This is definitely unisex. I definitely get a woody fragrance that has a slight, slight touch of sweetness and spiciness. So the spiciness and the heaviness of this, the heaviness of the spices is what makes me want to smell this in the fall. You know, we overuse the term cozy when we talk about these kind of um, fragrances, but this one truly, truly is cozy. It's one of those fragrances that when you're wearing it, you kind of feel like you need to go put a hoodie on and your most favoritist, I think I just made that word up, your most favorite jeans and just get really comfortable, cozy up with a blanket and a book. And that's kind of what this smells like. It's, this is kind of like a whole vibe. It's like a whole vibe of being cozy. So again, Whispers in the Library, I do not wear this one except for in the fall and winter because it is a little spicy and a little heavy. And it's so hot down here, you guys. I just cannot get away with wearing anything that is remotely heavy during the summertime or um, it just gets really, really cloying. The next one I have is called Bottega Veneta. I've had this one for a good long while. This is the EDP, the 1.7 fluid ounce. This one is a peppery, leathery suede balm is basically what this is. This has top notes of bergamot and pink pepper and then mid of rose, plum, jasmine, and spices with a base of patchouli and leather. This is a heavy hitter. This is one of those that I tend to spray away from my body. I will spray it sometimes like in the air and walk through it so it kind of lingers and gets in my hair. Sometimes I will spray it on my pant legs because if I'm walking, the um, scent trail or scent bubble will kind of follow me. This one will give me a headache if I wear it um, super heavy, if I overspray it. But let me tell you, this one is definitely um, fall or autumn and winter worthy. It is just like the little bottle. It has like this little leather little leather um, tassel on it and it's kind of representative of what you get with this one. It's suede -y. It almost smells like suede. Not as harsh as leather. Like if you were to get a brand new handbag, you know how you open it or if you smell it or the inside of a hot leather car, leather interior of a car. It's not like that in your face leather. It's not like, it's not like a black heavy leather. This to me is more of suede. It's what this reminds me of. It's very, very unique. This house does not get near the love that I think that it should. Uh, Bottega Veneta also has not K-N-O-T that I think is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. This one is no less gorgeous than not. I really love this fragrance and I think that it definitely should be in the fall roundup because it is a heavier fragrance. It's spicy. It reminds me of getting all dressed up to go to an event during the autumn time or being outside when it's a cool breeze blowing and you're kind of standing under like this tree with the leaves falling and you get a whiff of someone and you're like, you're thinking, hmm, do they have on a leather jacket or a leather, like a suede, maybe like a suede vest? 
I don't know guys this one is just very very beautiful definitely unisex again uh Bottega Veneta the next one I have is by the house of Salvatore Ferragamo and this one is Mysteriosa I cannot wear this fragrance except in the fall and winter because and you would wonder why because it's very fruity it's very very fruity it almost reminds me of a thick super ultra concentrated some type of juicy fruit gum or something like that let me tell you what's in this one this one has and this one came out in 2016 these notes are from the Bloomingdale's website. I couldn't find the actual notes on this house's website, so I'm just going to go by what Bloomingdale's had. They have top notes of wild blackberry and neroli. They have middle notes of orange blossom and tuberose. And then they have base notes listed as black vanilla mousse and patchouli. This is a rich, rich, rich fragrance. This is definitely a fragrance that is going to become super super cloying if you are in any type of heat or humidity i do not get any neroli when i spray this but i do get this huge blast of blackberry in the top and when i wear this like i can't pick up on the tuberose in this right now but there is a little bit of tuberose that tries to peek its head in there somewhere and then it's just going to dry down to a spicy vanilla so the patchouli, you really can't pick up on it to say that it's patchouli, but it's there enough to kind of spice up the vanilla and I think to kind of tone everything down. So yeah, this is um, Signorina Mysteriosa. And again, a if you're into fruity fragrances that are fall appropriate, this is definitely one to check out. The next one I have is Prada Candy Nights. I absolutely adore this fragrance. The only problem I have with this one is it doesn't last either. This one becomes a fantastic skin scent. Uh, it's great to wear to bed, but as far as lasting power, it is just not there. But for me to put this in my top 10 fall fragrances, there has to be something about this that I love, right? So this one has top notes of Neroli, Iris, and Bitter Orange. It has heart notes of tonka bean and vanilla with base notes of chocolate and patchouli. And the first thing that I get with this is a blast of neroli. And shortly after that, I mean very shortly after that, it starts drying down into this vanilla. It kind of switches from vanilla to chocolate. It is just an absolute delight to wear. If this lasted longer, it would just be probably one of the most addicting things on the planet. I love this. I love the way it starts out with the neroli and then it ends up with this chocolate hit. And it's not a milk chocolate. It's more of a dry chocolate. So it's more of a Montal chocolate greedy. If you're familiar with that chocolate. Like a dusty kind of chocolate. But it's there. It's, it's there and it is doing its thing. Oh, and it's just gorgeous. It is so, so pretty. Like I'm willing to deal with this not having lasting power. I just put this in my purse and just touch myself up every couple of hours. Because it is that pretty to me and I don't know what it is about this one but the fall it just makes me want to wear this one because I don't know it's just the chocolate and the neroli it's just mm, it starts out fresh but then it quickly quickly turns into something that would be super cloying in the heat so I had to include that one in my top 10. The next one I have is a niche fragrance by the house of Pierre Guillaume. This one is called Mad About You, and I did a dedicated video on this way, 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 way back, probably back in February or March of this year. So let me just tell you what Mad About You is in a nutshell. Oh, this one is so delicious. This one is black tea, licorice, red fruits, lipstick, violet, and leather. So... If you can imagine what this smells like, this is going to be makeup-y. It is going to be a little bit spicy, a little bit leathery. It's a very, very unique fragrance. It's very interesting. So the website describes this one as having gourmand type of quality. It says it's kind of candy, juicy red fruits with a touch of lipstick. 
and then it has a woody powdery leathery violet base and as you know violet is very powdery it's very um it has a dry effect to it along with all that you have this smoky black tea this is a very what i would call a very mysterious type of scent it's interesting it's kind of playful it's flirty i would even go so far as to say this one is definitely unisex as well even though it, it is lipsticky and powdery i definitely say that this one is unisex it's probably going to appeal more to females but um this one is so good that i think any guy girl whatever can pull this off and this one is a very long lasting one this one lasts a full eight hours on me it doesn't get weird or cloying except if i try to pull it off in the heat and i did buy this one at the end of spring last year so i'm super well the beginning of spring i didn't have that long to wear this one before it started getting hot around here so i'm super excited about pulling this one out and wearing it again again it's mad about you the next one i have i can only wear during the fall and winter because there is something about lavender and vanilla together that is so strong it will actually nauseate me and it is none other than mon Guerlain. this however is the edt version so there are huge differences between the mon Guerlain edp versus the edt and let's go over those real quick uh just a fun side note here i didn't know that mon Guerlain was actually inspired by angelina jolie so that was kind of cool uh the top notes in the mon Guerlain, um eau de toilette is mandarin carla lavender and the mid notes are sambac jasmine with the base of tahitian vanilla so the regular Mon Guerlain has lavender, jasmine, and sandalwood, and sandalwood explains the richness and the depth of the regular EDP. I am not a huge fan of sandalwood at all. This one does not have sandalwood in it, and this one also opens up with that citrus note of mandarin, where the regular um, Eau de Parfum does not. So the Mandarin tends to elevate this. It tends to keep it a little bit lighter. It does have the lavender and vanilla that poke, you know, that kind of pokes its head through. The Jasmine in this one is a little bit indolic. I don't really hear that many people talking about that with this one, but I do, when I first spray it, I do get that little bit of, hmm, like, okay, this is a little indolic but that goes away super duper fast this leaves me with a beautiful cozy comforting vanilla lavender type of scent that i do like to wear i do like to wear this one to bed in the fall and winter but um like i said i think it's a gorgeous scent i just have to save it for the cooler months the next one i have is one that i was introduced to this past year, and this one is Mac Velvet Teddy. Um, you guys, I don't even know how to describe this one other than just telling you that it is just the most indulgent honey fragrance I think I have ever, ever smelled. I have smelled Bee by Zoologist, and that one nauseates me. It actually makes me cough. This one here starts out with ginger zest, bergamot, and tobacco flower has a heart of vanilla orchid golden mimosa and wild honey and then the base has liquid musk and some tonka and some other things in it this one closely closely reminds me of tom ford's tobacco vanille which i do own but to me tobacco vanille is a little bit more tobacco and less honey where this one to me is a honey bomb it is super honeyish. It is um, very wearable. I can actually wear this one year round. I tend to wear this one a lot when I get out of the shower in the evening and go to bed because it's so comforting. 
it is relax it's just a relaxing fragrance it's one of those fragrances where if you just don't feel too great you can spray this on and i don't know there's something about this that just makes me feel better oh and this one does last a decently long time on me believe it or not this one lasts upwards of six hours on me people smell it around me so there's definitely i don't have i personally don't have any projection or sillage issues with this one whatsoever um but even though it does last and project it isn't too strong for me and my nose so yeah this one's a winner in my book the next one i have i also picked up this summer there was a huge sale going on for my blonde and i picked this one up with the uh, coupon code that was given to me by smurfy girly and was able to score this one for like half price it was like an incredible deal they were running this one, I will go through the notes very quickly on this one. There's bergamot up top. There's wild raspberry, mandarin leaf, black currant absolute. The heart notes on this one include jasmine, tuberose, magnolia, orange flower, almond flower, mimosa, and peony. And base notes have uh, amber, tonka bean, honey, natural vanilla, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood, dash of leather, and marshmallow. The reason I put it in my fall roundup is because it is a little bit strong for the summertime. This one actually, I did a video on this one too, um, several videos back. I will put it up to a link to the uh, video up top so you can click it and watch it if you want to. But this one reminds me of Dior Addict. To me, this one smell it does smell like Dior Addict, but to me, this one has more depth to it than Dior Addict. Dior Addict is basically a pretty linear scent. What you spray is semi what you're going to end up with into my nose. This one, though, this one has some pretty drastic differences as far as the changing of this fragrance. Although it does kind of end up the way that Dior Addict smells on dry down, if that makes any sense. This one does start out very fruity and it does have the bergamot. I do get the black currant when this one first starts out. The one thing that I did notice with this one versus uh, Dior Addict is the patchouli and the vetiver are definitely there in the dry down. And I do pick up on that dash of leather. I don't know what makes me want to compare these two so much, the Dior Addict and this one, but to my nose, I have sprayed my blonde on this arm and Dior Addict over here. And to me, after about 30 to 45 minutes, I end up with basically the same scent. So that being said, um, if you are a fan of Dior Addict, but you want something that starts out a little different, that, that may end up a bit different on your skin because we're all different, this one may be one to try out. Um, if you can get a sample of this one, I know the website has samples of this one quite often, and I will put the link to this website down in the description box. But I think this is, gr I think this is a fantastic fragrance. I think it's well done. Several uh fragrance reviewers have reviewed this one talked about it they all seem to love it it is a very well liked fragrance um totally unisex as well but because it is a bit heavier i did want to put it in my fall roundup and the last one i have where's the coffee in this you know when i first purchased this this is coffee break by um maison margella again this is replica when i first bought this or I, when i first saw it i thought oh my god here comes another coffee fragrance because i love coffee i love the smell of coffee i love the smell of a coffee house i love everything about it well when i went and when we kind of came off of quarantine and i went out and sniffed this one i was like where's the coffee what am i missing i did not look at the notes prior to going into it but the top notes on here are pepper essence, orange flower petals, patchouli. Then it goes into some tonka bean and a bunch of uh, resinous notes. And then it ends up with vanilla absolute, cedar, and vetiver. So uh, again, I have a small travel size of this one because I do not trust this house. Um, I love this house, but I just can't trust them. It's like I've gotten burned so many times with it. Uh, from different fragrances um, they just don't last on my skin and I I think I've heard other people say that so if you have the same issue with this house with the 
longevity. It's just not there. Um, drop me a comment down below, but, um, yeah, so Coffee Break, according to their website, Coffee Break is supposed to evoke a memory of a break from the bustling city at a warm coffee shop on a freezing winter day. A, co a comforting and cozy break over a creamy coffee, savoring hot pastries. The, the sensation of milk froth on your lips, the soft sound of the coffee machine are encapsulated in this new replica fragrance. Um, it says coffee break is composed of addictive notes of coffee softly blended with the tenderness of aromatic lavender, a unique milky and hot addiction to recall a moment of pure coziness. I don't know where in the world this came straight from the, um, uh, replica website. So there is no lavender here. There is no coffee here. I get no milk notes here. I will say this though, even though all that's all over the place, I do like this fragrance. I do think it is a fantastic fall fragrance. I have heard a lot of people say that they picked this one up or they sniffed it and they instantly fell in love with it. And it is a beautiful fragrance, you guys. Definitely one for, like it says, a cold winter day. I do agree with that. I would not want to wear this in the spring and summer, but I get no milky or lactonic notes in here. I get zero coffee. I get zero hot pastry, anything. There's no, there's nothing gourmand about this one at all. I basically start out with a peppery, patchouli almost type of vibe. And then it kind of goes into this very, very resinous vibe with tonka and vanilla and then vetiver. It really, to me, it kind of leans a little bit more masculine than any of the fragrances I have here. But it's still not, um, it's still not so uh, masculine leaning that um, it would kind of be off-putting to someone who doesn't like those type of fragrances, I don't feel like. But yeah, I was a little bit disappointed when I found out that this didn't have any coffee in it because I was getting really excited that I was going to have a new coffee fragrance. But unfortunately, it does not. But it's still a great fragrance. I think that it is perfect for fall and winter because of the notes that's in here, because of the way it comes off. So, And that is it, you guys. That is my roundup for the top 10 fragrances that I'm looking forward to wearing this fall and winter. Uh, I will do another video for winter fragrances because those are going to include even heavier notes, some ouds and things like that. So be on the lookout for that one. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Activate your notification bell so you will know when I upload another video. And until next time, guys, take care and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.